Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining me here on this care collab and thank you to Todd's Tropical for joining me, literally joining me on this care collab for Rincolelio Catlia Golden Zelle. Todd's Tropicals has some gorgeous hybrids with Golden Zelle as a parent and I'm really pleased that we can also show the blooms that he's had and to see what this orchid does as a parent to other orchids. Because this orchid, <laughs> I kid you not, let me just tell you, it's a cross between Rinculalia Cattleya Fortune and Cattleya Horus. Cattleya Horus is pink. So now imagine you're buying a golden cellar with the image of these yellow blooms in your mind, right? Golden blooms, like yellowy, okay? And then yours blooms out pink. Then you would think, oh no, I've got a mislabeled one. No, don't. Don't think that because Caplia Horus is a beautiful, strong pink Caplia and a golden cellar can bloom pink. And the only thing that is yellow about a pink golden cellar is the center of the lip here. The rest of the bloom is beautiful pink and completely contradictory to the name golden. It's a pink bloom. If, for example, you get a golden cellar that blooms pink, it could be that it is a cultivar called passion, but that's not where this ends with this hybrid. It can also bloom a coral color, and then the lip inside is what you see now, but the petals and the sepals would all be a beautiful coral color. It's also a striking bloom. It's still a golden cellar. So don't let the name confuse you if yours happens to bloom a different color. When it blooms a little bit of a coral color, chances are you've got yourself a named cultivar called Orange Pumpkin. And my goodness, it is a beautiful, beautiful variation of Golden Zelle. But be it pink, coral color, or as you see in my case, a very baby pastel yellow, it is still a Golden Zelle. So if you see this video and you're like, that's not what my bloom looks like, I hope that this was helpful. I always get very paranoid very quickly if a bloom of mine doesn't come out as to what I bought it and what I saw in pictures. And I can imagine the horror of anyone getting a golden seller, seeing a yellow bloom on the internet and saying, nope, that's not what I got. So hope this was helpful, but here's mine. I'm happy mine is yellow. Um, I was expecting a deeper yellow, a little bit more of a rich color not a washed out color. Know that these blooms are approximately a week old. This is the mature color that they have. However, this year, and I've had her now three years, this year for the first time, she's blooming with her pink flares that I love and I was so enchanted by when I saw her pictures on the interwebs. She also has that pink flare going up her sepals and I think the way these blooms are positioned this time around really, really is a striking show because you can see front and back with one visual. I must say I was a little annoyed with the bloom right here. Why isn't it facing us as well? Because there was more light coming from this side at this point in time when the bud formed because of a white facade. This one was facing directly towards the curtain where it lives. And I say curtain because it lives on the east side of my patio, which has full sun for about seven to eight hours a day and it would burn if I didn't put a white curtain in front of it. So much more light coming for this bud as it formed and from the facade more reflective light for this bud and eventually it started to straighten itself out. We have a little bit of a lean to going on here like well I'm about to fall over but no it did straighten out a little bit. It was much worse than this. Two blooms this year, which is awesome because it skipped one year. Last year, 2020, I didn't get a bloom. I still have the blind sheath tucked in in the back here. But in 2019, it did bloom for me with a single bloom. We are now getting the rhythm of this orchid dialed in, for which I'm very, very grateful. At this point in time, as it is blooming, it is blooming out, so to speak, even though the blooms are still fresh another two weeks, but I consider it the phase of blooming out. So at this point in time, I've stopped fertilizing. After the first week of blooms, I dropped all the fertilizer because the orchid isn't growing any new growths. I don't see any new roots either. This orchid grows new roots 
at the same time that it grows the new growth. Everything happens simultaneously. So this is after a week of these blooms being open, I've stopped fertilizing. Because of the metabolism of orchids being so slow, it has got enough of the nutrients that I put into it while the buds were forming and opening up. Now that it is going to bloom out and it is not growing any new growths, I don't have any fertilizer in there at all. Up to this point, I have been nurturing this growth of my golden cellar with 300 parts per million because as I mentioned, new growth, new roots, all at the same time, it's go time. 300 parts per million goes in. And in my case, because I am growing in LECA and self-watering, I am pHing my nutrient solution at 5.8 because my LECA stores in water that has a pH of 8. So what I'm trying to achieve here is get a differential of pH throughout the pot so that all the nutrients are being absorbed at their best possible pH, while a 5.8 solution goes into the pot, into the reservoir, and then as it wakes up, the 8 pH differential from what my LECA is stored in before I use it will balance out from 5.8 going up to hopefully 6.5. And when I say hopefully, there's always a margin of error depending on how long the lecker has been in the pot. And if I ever see any kind of deficiencies happening, then I know that I need to raise my pH a little bit more, maybe to six, maybe 6.1, because now my lecker has been in the pot long enough that I can pretty much say that the eight pH of the storage water has lost its effect. Because when I talk about watering, lecker and self-watering means that the lecker, in my case, never ever dries out. This orchid gets flushed a lot because I want to make sure that the climate in the pot maintains a healthy oxygen level. So I never let my microfibers dry out. And when I say oxygen level, that's because pouring water through the pot at regular intervals not only keeps the surface of the media free of salt accumulation, but it also pulls oxygen through, and we know that orchid roots love oxygen. Now you see my reservoir is very, very minimal. Sorry about the dirty pot, but there's hardly any water in here. And this water is so low at this point in time because I am heading into winter. So in the winter now, this orchid is not going to be fertilized and I will only keep the reservoir at half, if that filled with water. As the temperatures drop further down, where she lives indoors, I will get down to about 15 degrees Celsius. She will not be using as much water as she did clearly during the summer. But the flushing, I maintain that. I maintain my microfibers wet. I do not want them to dry out. I do not want to lose the wicking efficacy of my LECA throughout the colder months of the year. So as temperatures are dropping, there is no fertilizer in my golden cellar, but I do flush just to maintain the lecker in the pot damp. And I will also forfeit having any water in the reservoir during the months of December and January because they are steady cold throughout. When I say cold, that would be 15 degrees Celsius indoors, maybe 17, 18 degrees outdoors. When that for this orchid is cold. I have to bear in mind that in the, my case, I'm dealing with LECA, which is an evaporative cooling effect. So all of these factors I take into consideration by just maintaining the LECA wet, but not keeping the reservoir filled. In the summer, everything is so much easier, so much more fun because she is very, very thirsty. I can fertilize away at liberty, which is also much fun. There's no real thinking to be done. There's no margin of judgment. It's like, oh, your reservoir is empty. Whoa, here's another 300. Get on with it. Happy days. In between filling up the reservoir with fertilized water, I do flush her through as well with plain water just to clear out any of the stagnant air. And because she's very thirsty during the summer, that can happen every third to every fourth day. So she gets flushed a lot and that maintains the health in the pot. I have not had any, any pest issues with this orchid. 
She has lived next to orchids that showed little minute traces of scale activity, which were nipped in the bud straight away, so there was never any kind of fear of spreading. But if another orchid next to the other orchid would have seen the same symptoms, the golden seller has not. I cannot tell you if she's deer resistant. <laughs> Just kidding, sorry. <laughs> if you're still here, sorry about that, but yes. Yeah. Some plants have been bred to be deer resistant. Never figured out if orchids are or not. Sorry about that, but <laughs> anyway. Pests have not been an issue for this one at all. Not even on the blooms, because sometimes you can see pests coming, aphids, even ants in my season of 2021, my goodness. I felt like Ant Central over here, <laughs> but none of that, just gorgeous. Her buds take approximately four weeks to open from when you first see them. It's like, okay, but eventually she does open. And there's no big fanfare. It's not like you see a big frilly lip opening up, you know, coming out and none of that. One morning you wake up and, oh, hello, welcome back. <laughs> So in the winter, as I consider her one of my top guns, and in my definition, my top guns are those that need a lot of light and they live on the east side of my patio. In winter, she is up on the top shelf, top gun, top shelf, where she lives under blurple lights. And I only use them to supplement any kind of dull days that I have outside. The angle of the sun is so low that it will hit the area where she lives, not per se, on the top shelf, but as I have white walls indoors in my grow area as well, everything reflects, so there is plenty of light. And I only say blurple lights, I have shop lights as well, but that is because of her height. She does require quite a bit of air space. She is a tall orchid, even when she's not in bloom. Her leaves do stand bolt upright, so she's approximately 40 centimeters from the rhizome to the top of the leaf if they don't happen to curl like that one there. But yeah, that's why she's on the top shelf under blurple lights, has nothing to do with being in growth or not in growth. If, for example, it is a beautiful warm day, my east shelf is moving to the west shelf, and that shelf then has a lot of sun, and that is then where she will be moved out. So in the winter, on the daily, I am shuffling orchids in and out based on the light and based on the temperature. And then I try to match outdoor and indoor temperature so that there is no like shock to the root system or temperature change in the pot. If it's starting to come down to 15 degrees Celsius, that's when this orchid comes inside because by that time it is also 15 degrees Celsius in my grow area. I know it sounds all very complicated, but it's not. Maintaining the temperature of this orchid, I don't want it to go below 15 degrees Celsius ambient air because I don't want my pot to get any colder. Once again, evaporative cooling because of LECA. Uh, I calculate about a three degree differential. So I'm thinking I've got 12 degrees Celsius in that pot if the ambient air is 15 degrees. So that is my minimum. Maximum, whatever our summer throws at us and that can be anywhere between 35 to 40 degrees Celsius, even though 40 is very, very rare. I have absolutely no humidity to speak of during the summer. In the winter, I have approximately 55 to 70% humidity, but honestly, she is not in growth. I don't have to worry about losing root tips. The humidity itself for this orchid really doesn't factor in. She is still going to perform in bloom. Her fragrance is like a very light lemon. There's a kick of citrus like the lemon rind. If you squeeze a lemon, the droplets that go up your nose that are super intense and possibly could make you sneeze, there's a hint of that in there, but it is so mild, it is not in your face. You have to get really, really close to be able to smell that fragrance. It is not unpleasant, but it, you know, it's not one of those fresh citrus fragrances where you think, oh yes. So very light. Same as the bloom, light yellow, light citrus. Get in there close with the nose, touching nose to nose. And that fragrance becomes very, very evident. Amazing. And if I keep it like this, do you see the little sleeping puppy face in there? The ears to the left and right and his little nose and snout down there. Doesn't that look like a little sleeping puppy? Oh my goodness. 
But yeah, so that was my little detail, little detour. This video is very, very long. You can tell how much I love this orchid, hey? <laughs> so I'm really hoping that this video was, if not informative and helpful, a beautiful few minutes of looking at golden cellar blooms at their prime. If you're still here, thank you so very, very much. I really appreciate it. And thank you also to Todd's Tropicals for joining me on this care collab. The link to his video will be in the description below. And I'm looking forward to seeing his crosses with golden cellar as a parent. Have yourselves a beautiful, beautiful day, everybody. On one condition, please stay safe and take care. I appreciate your time very much. Bye.